Let us pray. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Love is the first and greatest. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Another test for Jesus from the religious leaders of his day. This time, a legal expert not in the law of the land, but a legal expert in the religious law from among the Pharisees put a question to Jesus to see how he would answer. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Once again, Jesus gives an answer that is both Brilliant and profound. Jesus eventually silenced his opponents. He passed their tests with flying colors. And they had no more to say. To the question about the greatest commandment, Jesus replied in the words of today's text, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God. It should be noted, sisters and brothers, that Jesus was quoting from the book of the law, from Deuteronomy. There, the Israelites are commanded to love the Lord with all their mind, with all their soul, with all their strength. What is also significant is that Jesus knew this law and it was important to him. So he quotes from the book of Deuteronomy in response to the question that was put to him. And as we think about those words today, it is important that we consider how we should love the Lord with all your heart. That is, our love for God should be wholehearted. When you are doing something with all your heart, you can say that you're doing it wholeheartedly. But when you're doing something and you find that there is something lacking, something missing, we sometimes speak of doing things half-heartedly. And Jesus is here saying, according to the law, that our love for God must not be a half-hearted kind of love. But our love for God should be total and complete. It should be done with total and complete commitment. And it is when we are putting our heart into whatever we are doing that we can say that it is being done with all our heart. Not with a divided heart, not with half-heartedness, but wholeheartedly. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
The law also says that the love of God should be with all the soul. In other words, my sisters and brothers, this describes a situation where we are loving God with full devotion. That our love for God is fervent and deep, going beyond the surface, going beyond the superficial to the essence of who we are. Love the, God, the Lord your God with all your soul. Love God with all your mind. The mind can be regarded as the seat of intellect. Our thoughts, our will are situated in the mind. The command to love God is not just about emotions or feelings. It's not just about how we feel in a moment. But it involves our will and every fiber of our being. So here today, my sisters and brothers, in response to the question, which is the greatest commandment? Jesus says, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. But he also says, love your neighbor. And always, my dear sisters and brothers, when Jesus says something, we must look out for that significant twist. The commandment to love God has something to follow. Love of God cannot be separated from love of neighbor. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, but we love God because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love God their brother and sister. Love of God cannot be divorced from love of neighbor. So Jesus' answer to the lawyer leads us to consider how to love our neighbor. It is one thing to say, I love my neighbor. But Jesus' words today show us, demonstrate to us how we should love our neighbor. We should love our neighbor as ourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. This means responding to others in the way that we would want them to respond to us. It means putting oneself in the neighbor's place. Entering the neighbor's skin and walking around in it so that one can feel what the neighbor feels and recognize that we're all bundled together in the bundle of life. An anthropologist was winding up several months of research in a small village. So the story goes. And while waiting for a ride to the airport for his return flight home, he decided to pass the time by making up a game for some children. His idea was to create a race for a basket of fruit and candy that he placed near a tree. And I know that this is the time when we hear a lot about Candies, trick-or-treat, Halloween. So this is the game that this anthropologist devised. But when he gave the signal to run, 
No one made a dash for the finish line. Instead, the children joined hands and ran together to the tree. When asked why they chose to run as a group rather than each racing for the prize, a little girl spoke up and said, How could one of us be happy when all of the others are sad? Because these children cared about each other, they wanted all to share the basket of fruit and candy. <clears throat> what a lovely story. And that, my sisters and brothers, is what it means in part to love your neighbor as yourself. That when one person weeps, we weep with that one. When one person rejoices, we rejoice with that one. So before you take any action against anyone, ask yourself this question. Is this something I'd like another to do to me? Ask yourself, when I fail, when I make a mistake, when I mess up, how would I like to be treated? When I succeed, when something good happens to me, when I have an achievement or some accomplishment, how would I like others to regard me? When I'm sick or lonely or in trouble or have some need, how would I like others or what would I like others to do? And so my sisters and brothers, when we ask these questions, it will guide our response to others. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. And so I say, my sisters and brothers, that love is the first and greatest commandment. It is what motivates us to honor and obey God. It is important to observe that in responding to the question that the lawyer put to him, the question about which is the greatest commandment, Jesus did not say, you shall have no other gods before me, is the greatest commandment. He did not quote the law about idolatry. Or he did not say that it is the law against the wrongful use of the name of the law. He did not even speak about the law concerning the Sabbath. The first and greatest is to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And by, so, and by so doing, we honor and fulfill our duty to God. When you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, then you will fulfill all that the law requires us to do in relation to God. So love is the first and greatest commandment because it is what motivates us to do good to others who are made in the image of God. Again, when asked which is the greatest commandment, Jesus didn't quote the commands that govern human interaction. You know, my sisters and brothers, that the commandments, the Ten Commandments, can be divided into two. We have one section dealing with our duty to God, and then there's another section of the commandments that deal with our interaction, our relationships with one another. Jesus did not quote any of those commandments. He did not say, honor your father and mother. He did not say, you shall not murder. He did not say, you shall not commit adultery. He did not say, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, or you shall not covet. Jesus did not quote any of these. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. Because when we do that, we will honor and fulfill our duty to our neighbor. We will do nothing 
to harm or hurt our neighbor. We will honor our parents. We will honor marriage. We will honor the sanctity of life. We will respect what belongs to other people or what they have. So love is the first and greatest commandment. Because in the final analysis, my sisters and brothers, it is what motivates us to be good stewards and servants of God. We will do our best for God in response to God's love for us. When we recognize how much God loves us and how much God has done for us, then we will want to give God our best. God is love. And it is God who first loved us. And so the first and greatest commandment is to love, to love God, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. The best that we have of our love, devotion, strength, and intellect, we will want to consecrate to God as a response to the love that God has shown us. Loving God with all our heart and soul and mind will keep us grounded and rooted in our service and our stewardship, no matter the circumstances, no matter the criticism, no matter the inconvenience, that love that we have for God will keep us grounded and rooted and serving God to the best of our ability and serving our neighbors as ourselves. We will do our best for God always because this love is not merely an emotion or a feeling here today and gone tomorrow, but it is a decision, an act of the will. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. I'm glad that Brother Brown chairman of our finance committee said something about our meeting this week. We are reminding you, my dear sisters and brothers, that we are all stewards of God's gifts and that we owe the best that we can give to God. So that hymn I was quoting has a verse that goes like this, Take my silver, and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. During the last week, we were attending a retreat, a bishop's retreat in Binghamton. And our keynote speaker, Bishop Young Jin Cho, um, told a story that was very interesting. He told of a man who was a convert to Christianity, to Christ. And he was being baptized. And when the candidate for baptism was taken down to the water, he held his wallet in his hand high above the water, as one would lift the cross of Christ. And when asked why was he doing that, he replied that he didn't want his wallet baptized. He did not want his wallet baptized. It reminds me of another story from another hymn. The, the, the hymn um, says that, um, Guide me, O the great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. And in singing that hymn, there was someone, when he reached a line, that says, um, Guide me safely 
Land my safe on Canaan's side. Land me safely on Canaan's side. But instead of saying, land me safe on Canaan's side, he said, land my safe on Canaan's side. <laughs> in other words, he was more interested in his safe, his treasure, his money, than he was even interested in his soul. And so this man didn't want his wallet to be baptized. But we are reminded as stewards of God, my sisters and brothers, that all that we have, our time, our, our talents, our thoughts, our treasure, our money, all that we have is a gift to us from God and that we are called to entrust those things and to use those things in the worship and service of God and in the service of our brothers and sisters. So as we close today, my sisters and brothers, I want to issue an appeal. I want to invite you who are in the congregation today to a deeper love and service to God and neighbor. Today, my sisters and brothers, you are invited to rise from your seat and come to the altar as a demonstration that you recognize you have not loved God as you are. I have not loved God as I ought. And I confess that to you today. That my love for God can go deeper. That I can give more of my heart and more of my devotion, and more of my, my, my mind to loving God. And so we all can make that confession as we come to the altar today and kneel in silence to God just for a few moments as a way of recognizing that we have not loved God as we are. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. But we are willing today to commit to having a deeper relationship to God and to showing more love for our neighbor. So I'm going to ask our organist to play something at this time. And for a few moments, my sisters and brothers, before we have the choral anthem ascribed to the Lord, we will pray. I invite you, if you're so moved, to come now and kneel at the altar as a way of showing that you are prepared to offer yourself more fully to God in love. we have not loved you as we ought and we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves and now in this moment, in this service, at this time, we pray for your forgiveness and we pray Lord that you will pour your, heart, your love into our hearts and that you will move us so that we may give ourselves more fully to you, all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, we will give up to your service and that you will use us to your glory, that you will use us so that others may be blessed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> 